Hey guys, press the bell icon and never miss a video from Iola DIY. Hi guys. Okay, let me just set the camera. I think my camera is properly visible here. It is still a little crooked. Okay, looks like the camera angle is perfect now. Hi everyone. Can you all see it properly, like with proper orientation and everything? Just drop a message that yes, it is visible with proper orientation of my camera. Hi Lona, hi Hina, hi everyone. I'll try to say hi to everyone. And let me just uh, go and see if I can see everything properly. Okay, I can see the comments here. So hi guys, so I have Nathmal here with me and she's gonna be modding this particular segment of uh, live session. And I'm so excited to see all of you. I see so many people just drop in, say hi, and just let me know which country are you watching from. Uh, that actually makes me very happy when I get to know that, you know, everyone is watching from all around the world. So, Natmo, thank you so much again for modding this. And today we will be uh, doing this uh, beautiful tag. Um, not sure. Uh, can you guys see everything properly like in focus like uh, the tag uh, let me just make sure that everything is uh, perfect and in focus so i will quickly i'm just going to quickly wipe my lens so that i'm 100 percent sure that it is in focus okay so looks like it is properly in focus everything is visible and we are gonna get started in just like few seconds so okay so guys uh today we will be uh okay so we will be uh making this beautiful tag and uh one of uh uh, one person commented that I should get closer okay so I think this should be fine okay so in live sessions I think the camera orientation is the toughest part for me because uh, like uh, as I speak I'm seeing myself live and then uh, there's a lag so I can't exactly see where it is so uh, we'll be making this beautiful tag card and it has been made using a uh, this collection called a uh, surfboard and you can use any collections any any of the collections um, you know uh, it's very simple very easy uh, to make and all our collections they go uh, well with this uh, kind of uh, mixed media layouts so my question to you guys is I give you an option do you want me to make exactly same tag using the same collection or I'm giving you uh, or I am giving you, uh, sorry, just let me make sure that camera is again because I see some comments. Uh, okay, so Nathmil, I was just chatting with Nathmil and I asked her if the camera and everything is fine and everything looks perfect so my question is do you want me to make the exact same tag using the surfboard or using some other collection of ours i mean i can get started with any so just guys type in your comment i'm gonna wait for like 20 seconds and just let me know because i want this to be an interactive process where you guys tell me that you know uh, which collection you want you want to see so i can make something similar using pretty mosaic 
or surfboard. Uh, the choice is yours, guys. So I see one girl telling me other, please. So pick pretty mosaic or surfboard. I can pick any, and I'll show you how easy it is to make beautiful tag gift tags. No matter which collection you have, and uh, no matter anything which you're using. Like I mean, all it depends is uh, you know how you are channeling your inner creativity. So how about we do something different? Let's pick up pretty mosaic because we already have one in surfboard. So one thing which you'll notice here in this tag, always have one focal element. So whenever I make a tag, a card or a layout, I always have one area of focus. Your, your focus area should be sim like just, just one particular, like one particular area. It should not be all around the page because when a user, when a person is like seeing your creation, his focus should go on just one area, not the entire page. So you can see that there's one trip, tip and trick which I'm going to give you guys is have one focal area in your creation. Okay, so now we're going to get started with Pretty Mosaic. And the first step is creating a base. Okay, so for the base, um, you can use your trimmer or simple ruler and, and scissors. You don't need to have fancy supply, guys. I always insist on this you can make beautiful creations without any fancy tools yeah and like natmil said prima flowers are always the focus okay so you're gonna need a cardstock like it can be of uh, any depth like any kind of thickness like it can be even thin because as it is we are going to be layering and when you are layering you don't need to have a uh, cardstock which is uh, very thick you know because when you're layering already these papers are very thick our prima papers are like super good quality so once you put on the cardstock they look they look really good so i'm gonna just take one of this and um, get the depth of this particular uh, okay uh sorry get the width of this particular uh tag because i want exactly same and the thing is i'm a little hazy today uh, so in case i jumble up words guys please uh, accept my apology in advance okay so here it is let's drop this okay and we see this here it's a little less match uh, let's chop another one and i think the measurement says four by six so let's just go with four and as it is the length is 12 inches so once we uh, like uh, fold it into half, it's going to be of perfect size. Okay. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to fold this into half. Now, the next step would be selecting papers. So as you can see, this is a perfect size. We will be selecting papers and then we will be adding them to the, uh, we'll be attaching these uh, on the top okay so let's select the papers so how, this looks like a very pretty background so i'm using journaling cards from pretty mosaic and one thing which i really like about our paper lines is that they come in different sizes like so there's a size for each purpose you want to make cards you have six by six and this journaling size you want to make layouts or albums you have 12 by 12 and 8 by 8 as well as a4 sizes so you know when you cut the, like if you have a 12 by 12 sheet and you're trying to make a card out of it half of the paper goes to waste and it really breaks my heart i don't know why but like even with so much of paper and working with the best teams and everything from past 10 years still my heart breaks if i waste my paper so i really love the fact that we have multiple sizes in all the collections so i'm gonna choose this particular uh, paper and uh, how we're gonna go about it is this is going to be my front and so quickly let's stick this and make sure that our size is perfect yeah size is perfect so i'm gonna stick this and You can use your ATG, you can use your normal blue, school blue, uh, glossy accents, anything, any kind of adhesive would do. This gun has been with me from past 10 years or something like. There are few tools. I would like to know guys, uh, comment down which is your oldest tool and how many years. 
you have been with okay so i have this particular thing ready here with me and let's select the insides um, this looks good this can be on the back right so i'm gonna stick this one let's do the insides now so for insides I'm gonna look for something which is already in vertical orientation like this this is perfect right you can write a message here it looks like a design itself like I mean so beautiful right okay Here I am going to add this one here and just one more on the top and that would complete our process of making the base so what should be on the top guys there's such pretty designs like I always get confused what to put and what not to put this collection is my absolute favorite and I'm gonna put this one it gives a nice contrast so um, Guys, can you all hear me properly? Um, Riddhi, uh, sorry, uh, Nathmil just messaged me that the sound is not to my iPods. Give me one second. My okay, guys, uh, can you hear me properly now? Perfect. So, Nathmil has messaged me that the sound is good now. So, I am not worried about it okay so guys um, I am right now just creating the base for my beautiful tag pad we have made one in using a surfboard collection I'm gonna make the next one using the pretty mozia collection and now before you guys get started now you have to de-stress the edges this is the most important part <coughs> excuse me okay so de-stressing what it does it balances out you see these edges like the white space uh, look at this side and look at this side this one looks better right because we have de-stressed it so it kind of helps in blending the edges okay so And here we have a perfect now now my next step would be preparing the base like of the actual area where I'm going to work and for that what I do is I put some clear gesso so this is my clear gesso by Finnebert Art Basics by Prima line and absolutely uh, in love with everything which is Prima uh, the quality is superb and uh, everything like i remember using uh, other brands when prima like this is like back in 2011 or something when there was no uh, uh, mixed media line by us and uh, after that when prima launched their mixed media line and once i started using it there was no looking back I, like my bottle of gesso from liquitex and modeling paste from liquitex is still in my shelf eight years old never been touched after once i started using these products they're like super good quality so here we have a, a, a piece which has a clear gesso on top of it this would help me in preventing the actual color of the background because i don't want the actual color of the background to be compromised when i do 
uh, spraying and misting and all those things. So I quickly go and uh, just dry it before uh, moving forward with anything else. Okay, so this dries up pretty quick and this gives a nice, very, uh, okay, this, uh, this is pretty good, like, I just got another comment which says that the camera is not at the center, okay, I am having a little bit of trouble now, okay, guys, um, I'll just continue because it's impossible to fix, because I can see the live video and I can see it clearly, so I hope it would work. I'm so sorry. Uh, so here, so this dries pretty quick. The clear gesso dries pr pretty quick. And the next thing which I'm going to do is apply some texture paste, which is uh, the white crackle texture paste. And this cracks up the layout at different, different places. And it looks absolutely beautiful once it is dry. Uh, so let's go forward with that. And I'm going to take my knife and I will just apply it like this and you can see already the background has a nice cracked effect so this would perfectly blend with the what I'm trying to achieve here so here the thicker uh, layer of paste you will apply the larger cracks are going to be okay so let's go ahead uh, and just uh, quickly uh, dry this up So one thing, uh, so two of my favorite pastes from our line is uh, texture paste which in, bright, in white crackle and the paper texture paste. The reason I like both of them is because they dry very quickly in comparison to other and they have a beautiful texture. These are like always in my staple, like in my, I always have extras of these particular uh, pastes. So now the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to take a stencil and you can use any stencil, like any kind of stencil which you have. It doesn't have to be this particular one. I don't even remember which line this stencil was from. But yeah, we have some beautiful stencils out there by Finnebear, uh, which were recently released. Uh, if you guys want, you can check that out. So my next step is that I'm going to apply this beautiful texture paste to give my piece a nice texture. And let's put it inside. And this is how the texture comes out. And after that, we're going to start decorating uh, everything on top of it, okay? So now, uh, next step, always, guys, always, these all are dry, so I'm going to use a different batch. Make sure that you wipe your stencils. Trust me, uh, our pastes are really good quality and they dry very fast. So make sure that you dry them because these pastes, they don't get off that easily. So I always make sure that I wipe my stencil and everything because I would hate to spoil any of my stencils. They're just super pretty and they're hard to find. They get sold out so easily they're, because they're so good. They get really, so, they get sold out very easily. So I'm just going to take some water and sprinkle. Usually I go to my wash basin and clean it, but given that this is a live, I'm not going to get up and wash it, but I think this should be good. I can rinse it again later, but this should be suffice for the time being. Okay, so this part is done. This part is done. And now the next thing which I'm going to do is dry this one out. Uh, it will dry very quickly, guys. You won't even get to know. Like just count 1 to 50 and it will be dry. It, it, it will be done.
guys. This is dry now. I'm sorry I got interrupted. There was a call coming on my phone. Um, so, yeah. Uh, that's a dream to have, like a small sink in my craft room. Right now, I don't even have a craft room. I think it's a little wet yet. So, I'm going to dry it again. Okay friends, uh, this is ready and we are going to get started with creating our, uh, basically pasting all our elements. So, so now the next step which I am going to do is I am going to pick two colors to add a, a little hue of it, like, like a shade of it. So let's pick this green color because this would go very well with this particular color and the other one let's pick this one. Actually, no, this is too light. So let's pick something contrasting. This would look good, like gold and green and pink, right? So, uh, I am going to open my paint and I am just going to paint. So for painting this, just dab your uh, brush with water because we need a lot of water. Just add it like this. It's mixed media so nothing has to be in the lines like you don't have a specific rule that you have to follow just take some water spread it and the paint will spread very beautifully on its own and I always have a tissue I dab the excess like this okay once this is done I am going to take some gold and add some gold on the corner like this I have added a lot of water to my paintbrush that helps in diluting the paint. That's amazing, Debbie. I'm glad that I could make you fall in love with this pretty collection. All our collections are super pretty and so well coordinated. Our product designers are really, really creative. Okay, so now we have the paint on it. Let's give it a quick dry and before we move on to the next layer. So guys, this uh, layer is done and now we'll move on to our next layer and that is basically adding this piece, this piece. So basically what I generally do is I always add, like I always use my small journaling note cards for creating small paper layers behind. Uh, let me see if I have one for pretty more yet. I can't seem to find my pretty mosaic layer of a small pad. So I'm going to use this 4x6 pad. So let's pick a color which is a little contrasting and we'll elevate the whole thing. Um, actually, this looks nice. We can use this and then on top of it, when we use our pretty mosaic flowers, they would look amazing. Yeah, the shades would look really good. Okay, so I'm going to just uh, simply take this and chop this into two parts. And now to create something like this, I will just use my hands and cut it. 
once i've cut it i am going to de-stress this so like guys i was telling you about my tools oh okay so um dalia you are asking us what is the difference between sparks and metallics metallics have a very metal like effect and sparks they shine like i can show you a small swatch right now using some metallics and sparks and then you can see the difference bits of paper which are ready and I am simply going to de-stress them and after de-stressing them I will add it like this so this creates a nice center point luckily my glue gun was on so I won't have to wait for it to dry up okay let's see it's gonna show up from the side because we're gonna be covering it fully and here we have this so these two portions they are in the center and now let's move on to the next step that is selecting some chipboard so one of the chipboards which I'm going to be using is this I'm not sure where it came from but I do have this from a very long time uh, it was just there in my stash and another chipboard which we can use for this particular any good chipboard right now okay we can use this one or we can always use our uh, wonderful molds I think I'm gonna go forward with the molds and I can show you guys how beautifully our redesigned molds and our prima line molds they blend with our mixed media lines so uh, let's pick so we do want something to pop like this from the top and because that looks really nice when we create a focal element it's like two things it's like an elongated uh, structure which draws your attention uh, the next one which I'm gonna use is I have so many of these molds uh, so you, you, you guys can see it here like uh, I generally make them and keep them in batch and then use them as I go and I keep on refilling this particular box very often you'll see me very often refilling this box okay so maybe this can look good actually what we can do is we can chop this into two parts and put one here and put one here okay or just we, we we'll see how we're gonna do okay so the next part which we're gonna do is select the flowers which we'll be using Okay, so this is our pretty mosaic flower collection and uh, I have a lot of flowers from the collection which I've used so that is why I've kept them in this packet but in case you want to see the entire uh, collection of uh, pretty mosaic flowers I think I have it somewhere over here um, I can't seem to find my uh, new collection flowers they were somewhere over here but uh, you guys can check out the website but all are pretty all our new collections they have beautiful flowers so now the next thing I'm gonna do is select my what? yeah select the flower which I'm gonna put in the center so I'm thinking to make this as the center point something like this if you see they all 
coordinate very well they look very well they, they, they go very well together with each other uh, let's see if you have some different flowers so this is another pretty mosaic flower which uh, but i think they all are too big i really like this and we're gonna build on top of it once we get there so the first step is coloring these two and i'm gonna be i'm gonna be doing embossing powder like i'm gonna be doing the embossing uh, technique on top of these so uh, fairly simple i have a uh, embossing embossing pad and i just i'm going to dab this like this and let me dab it again And the next step would be choosing my embossing colors so because I'm going to be working with pretty mosaic it has beautiful maroon shades so I'll use this color and here's my embossing tray so just simply push this like this and uh, take your tweezer, tweezer and it like this so this is embossed it looks gorgeous and uh, I'm gonna put this color back to where it came from the excess powder and let's go to the next one for the next one I have taken a little different shade and this particular one I'm gonna dab it again with this and that would give it a nice shaded effect here let's dry both of them now Okay guys, so this part is done now and uh, now we have two of our pieces ready to go on and we're going to put the, one, of the, one of them like this and the other one like this and the next step is creating my focal point in the center which will be something like, let's pick this one, something like this. So pretty much similar, just different collection line. So uh, to make this one raised, what we do, what I do usually is I take a chipboard and I chop it and I create a board out of it, like a small raised dimension out of it. So here's a small piece of chipboard and I am going to cut it into parts. I'll create a raised uh, dimension here and I just will simply put this like on top of here and once I do this uh, before sticking it you can see that I have added these uh, wired pollens so I have these pollen sticks back then when I used to do a lot of handmade uh, flowers I used to use these pollens to make the centers so now I just did what I do is just simply twirl them you can use any kind of floral wire and add them in the back this would again this again elevates the project and gives it a nice very nice effect 
so I'm just going to twirl these and create few of them and just add them in the back so before I do that let's stick this portion and then let's stick this part because then these two will be fixed and everything we can build around them okay so I'm gonna stick this here eventually and I just want to make sure everything is going properly yes everything looks perfect here so before sticking it let's add some glue add this piece over here and one more of these over here and just glue it now everything is glued properly together and this one would come here for this again add some glue we made some of these nice swirls let's add them here and add it tuck this flower inside like this now the next step would be creating more flowers like adding some more flowers on the side so i have this nice flower which i can add here and i can add like this so this would complete complete the entire uh, look but I think uh, I want a different color so I'm going to tuck this particular one here and I am going to tuck it like this and let's add uh, this flower something like this here yeah I want to make it almost similar to what I have been showing you so And let's add this like here and add this last flower onto here. So guys, as you can see, this part is done. Now let's see what will look nice submerging from the top. I think these look better because they would be really heavy. Like it's a very small card. They're better for the layouts. Um, so this looks pretty good uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add this here and this one here and we will paint that right now so oh I'm so sorry guys my camera has gotten off the frame I can see it in the screen I'm gonna raise this a little up here now you guys can see everything properly. sorry for the noise okay so this part is done and uh, the next part would be finishing it up uh, by adding some more paint and gesso and everything all around so for that uh, first we are going to stick this and then color this So I have added these two pieces okay these two pieces are added so let's paint these two pieces and we're going to paint them in green because it will add a nice contrast I am going to take my paintbrush add my paint and drip it on top of it these uh, the clay absorbs paint really nicely and very quickly so it's very easy to color these moldable pieces if you're using clay as your molding material so once this is done uh, the next part in the next step i will add some stamping so i'm just going to take a black color ink and i will stamp it so I have one of these Prima stamps, it is one of the old texture stamps. Uh, you can use any kind of texture stamp and just simply take it and add it like this on the 
random corners of your creation so this again adds more texture to your work now uh, moving on uh, I'm gonna just uh, add some art stones and some of our crystals which again are a very nice uh, way to enhance so I'm gonna use this crystal uh, this is uh, this one is particularly from our Misty Rose collection uh, you can use any collection with anything our collections they blend very well with each other this here one of them here so I've added my crystals and next one I'm gonna just uh, add my art stone and uh, that is again a very simple process uh, this is my favorite product from Prima these art stones uh, uh, what I do is I use soft gloss gel. You can use any kind of gel. You can even use, uh, what do you say, uh, gesso. Because gesso acts as an adhesive. And depending whether it is a clear gesso or a white gesso, it will dry up accordingly. So I'm just going to spread this gloss uh, in a random fashion and try to get this gloss within these flowers so that I can when I sprinkle art stones on it they look they kind of just they seem natural they look like they have been uh, you know they just they're just coming from inside the flower so just take your art stone and add it see and then once you have added while it is still wet you can actually create more textures like this like just take random paint from different sides and add it to all the corners I'm going to do the same as I have done in this one to uh, basically this corner actually I'm going to do it to this corner it will look more centered and uh, this is the I have just simply used a soft gel you can use it straight out of the jar or, of, or out of the tube uh, Okay, so here I'm going to add this one. So guys, uh, you can see that after adding art stones, the art piece gets a lot of definition and texture of its own. So these are a staple supplies, like art stones are staple. If you like doing mis mixed media, the first thing you got to buy is buy art stones. They are wonderful. Okay, so this seems pretty much similar to this one but uh, we are missing one thing which is basically balancing everything out and to balance everything out what i do usually is uh, i take some white gesso and i take our dabbing brush by fenaber and simply just dab some white gesso on my project so this blends everything you can see this is going to be blending the entire project into one. It seems uniform. So, and one thing which I forgot to put in this one was this thread, which you can see. In this one, uh, you can't see it properly in this video because obviously it's a live stream. So it's not HD quality. But if you look at the image which we posted, there are thread structures coming outside from the flower. So I use simple thread uh, this thread which you use for sewing and I create a small bunch like this and I tuck them inside the flowers so for that I just take some glue again and add some glue and add these inside uh, I should have done this earlier but I'm gonna try to do it right now a uh, paintbrush will come in handy Okay. just add them in a random fashion and they look very nice and chopped excess so 
here it gives some more texture to your mixed media pieces so guys um, as you can see this is now completed and this is done using our pretty mosaic collection and this is done using our surfboard collection you can clearly see the contrast and they look beautiful both of them together and i am so so happy that uh, you guys joined me for this particular live uh, i couldn't be more grateful and uh, De debbie your answer your question is that you need the medium ones yes they are really good but you can use small and large too they look equally nice uh, and uh, thank you so so much guys again for watching my video and uh, coming to this live uh, i'm so sorry for some technical interruptions in the middle i hope you all will have a wonderful day uh, i hope all of you are staying safe and okay mela has asked me what product do you use to put the art stone so i'm using soft gel you can use any kind of gel you can even use gesso to put art stones you can post your questions here i'll go over them and i'll try to answer them as soon as possible again i want to thank you all for joining me and uh, have a wonderful and a blessed day and stay safe